Welcome. It's good to connect with you again. Uh, today I am excited to share with you a little bit more about the chakras and uh, also at some point I'm going to have to rescue Spasmo. He's already starting to fall off of his little perch there. Uh, don't get dizzy. All right, so uh, when we're talking about the chakras, what we're talking about is basically uh, an ancient system for charting energy points in our bodies. And those energy points are used for healing, for refreshing the body, for understanding various uh, physical and emotional and psychological health challenges or strengths. Uh, so not only do they highlight where you could use extra support, but they also highlight what you already do really well, uh, potentially. And of course, this is unique to each person. And I think the other thing to, to understand is that there are literally thousands of points in the body for chakra work, um, sort of energy centers, I'm boosting up the cat now, uh, in the body. And uh, a person could spend a lifetime studying the chakras more in depth and still have a lot to learn. Uh, here in the West, we tend to focus on the seven primary chakras. And by primary, my understanding is that there are energy points in the body that are a little bit larger or a little bit more central that we tend to work with. And seven is a sort of a favorite number for a lot of different uh, spiritual pursuits. So it makes sense to me that that's sort of what, what we Westerners chose to focus on. Um, one of my favorite books is uh, by an author, uh, I cannot remember her first name, her last name is Govinda, with a G, and she actually wrote her book in East India, and uh, from, from there it was translated, and so what I bought was a very, uh, a very well done translation of her studies and her understandings of the chakras and particularly the seven primary chakras. And one of the things that I find odd about how Western understandings of the chakras or, or mainstream Western understandings of the chakras has changed since I began studying them is that when I was first studying them, I'm seeing that my hair is sticking up here. Uh, so the rainbow of colors going up through the body, uh, just like we understand them now, uh, and the colors were similar, but not exactly the same. And those colors before fit with what I learned from Govinda's work from a variety of other original sources and then just about a year ago I went online to find a picture of the human body with the seven primary chakra points uh, color-coded in it and I could not find an image with that original uh, color pattern in it. I could only find images with the current popular color pattern, uh, which I don't feel, for me, it's not accurate. But if it works for you, it works for you, and that's wonderful. So don't worry about it too much. So those colors are root chakra at the base of your spine is red. Sacral chakra uh, just below your belly button is orange. The solar plexus chakra, the third chakra, is uh, right up there at the, at the base of your uh, ribs. Uh, it's the solar plexus, is yellow. 
heart chakra is green. This all should sound really familiar. This is pretty standard even today. Throat chakra is blue. Now, in my uh, original understanding, my earlier studies, this would have been a dark blue at the throat chakra, kind of an indigo. Uh, but it didn't matter that much because it was the only blue. Then you have third eye chakra, the sixth chakra right up here. Now, in my earlier studies, that's purple. Uh, today, it's called a lighter blue or a, a different shade of blue or maybe purple or it's a little confusing because then you've got the top of the head, which in my studies was white and sometimes gold. And now that crown chakra is purple in a lot of studies. And I, I think I think that speaks to the way in which we prefer to stay in the body, that we really are fascinated here in the West by the idea of what that purple symbolizes by insight and vision and foresight and uh, a greater knowing of oneself. All of these things are very important and I love that they have become popular, but to sort of end your practice there, even though you're still talking about this upper chakra, uh, as far as, as the tools for working with it color-wise go, um, I find that really fascinating that we have, as a culture, chosen to do that, that that is now mainstream in America. So again, in the, in the studies that I have done, this is the seventh chakra. The first chakra is the root chakra at the bottom and it kind of goes up. Uh, it would have been and is for me white or gold. Now, some of the studies I've done uh, talk about an eighth chakra, which is just above the head and can be just as important, but I don't know very much about that one. Uh, there are also chakras that I would like to discuss a little bit more today that are called secondary chakras. So you've got your seven primaries in a, in a line right up your body, the center of your body, and then you have secondary chakras. And uh, those are in the soles of your feet and in the palms of your hands. Uh, there's also often discussed uh, that the heart chakra has a front heart chakra and a back heart chakra and the back heart chakra is actually in you know best accessed from your back versus the front heart chakra from your front um, here versus here and I have worked with that just a tiny bit and it's it's uh, there are so many chakras and working with each of them has value but for today, what I'd like to talk about actually is the chakras, the secondary chakras in the palms of your hands. And the reason for that is that this is how I first learned to feel energy, to, to trust that what I was feeling was actually energy, even when I could not see it. And this is also a tool that you can use then to activate or to work with or to heal each of your other chakras um, by using the secondary chakras and the energy uh, in the palms of your hands. Now, before I ever even heard of chakras at all, uh, back when I was actually a little, a little kid, um, my aunt taught me about energy moving in and out of the palms of the hands and taught me that for most people in her understanding, you had a receiving hand and hands that received energy and a hand that pushed energy out, that gave energy. And um, she, at the time, was very interested in discovering which hand was which, if there was any, if it had any relationship to if you were right-handed or left-handed, or if just most people, regardless of what hand was primary for them, had the same hand that gave energy and the same hand that received energy. 
I have found that that it it isn't as exact for me the giving and receiving and which hand it is and that sort of thing and so when I came to learn more about chakras and working with the chakras and that system of working with energy it made a lot more sense to me uh, to couple that with what my aunt had already taught me uh, when I was much younger. So the easiest way to activate the energy in the chakras that are in the palms of your hands is to rub them together. And you'll probably hear me doing that. So I'm not rubbing really hard. I'm not like, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm not, um, I'm not necessarily twisting. I'm, I'm going to have to yell at a cat. Pardon me. <sighs> Excuse me for that interruption. Uh, my little fur children were not listening. Uh, so you take your hands. Here we are dealing with the secondary chakras. And you rub them together. And then when you're done rubbing them together, when, when you, you can kind of feel the warmth in your palms a little bit, um, then you hold them there for a minute, and then you start pulling them apart just a little bit, just a little bit apart. And maybe you'll feel the way that they still feel connected to each other, the way that they feel like they're still touching on some level or there's still something between them besides air. And in fact, one of the activities that I uh, practiced when I started working with the chakras and started healing my own chakras was that I would activate my chakras and then I would pull them apart and then I would pull them apart a little further and I would see how far I could pull my hands apart and still feel that connection between them of the energy that was moving um, back and forth, kind of figure eight style almost, between my palms. And once, once that movement of energy, once you can get that far enough apart to, for example, put your head in between your hands, this is how you can work one way that you can work to activate other chakras in your body, uh, sorry, is by activating these and keeping that connection and that movement of energy between them and then, for example, working on your throat chakra. Having moving energy pass through another chakra that may not have as much movement in it, that might be sluggish or might be blocked up. Uh, a healthy body has movement. A healthy energy point has movement. Now, it also isn't just draining all of its energy away. It's not weak from lack of energy, uh, but it's not getting compacted from a lack of movement of the energy either. You want the energy to flow through. So uh, that is an introduction to secondary chakras and to the basics of the chakras in the body. And what I'm hoping to accomplish in the next few weeks is that each week I will... Hello, Spasmo. Uh, each week I will focus now on one of the chakras, one of the primary seven chakras in the body, and give you more information about that particular chakra, uh, including some additional ways that you can support it or work with it, uh, what that chakra might represent in your body or in your psychology and your in the way that you in the old tapes in your head of what you're afraid of or what makes you angry or upset uh, it's possible to change how the energy in the related chakra moves and create a shift in the emotional energy that you carry the baggage let's call it and that has been a very helpful tool for me. There are also essential oils and uh, particular crystals or stones and flower essences and uh, you know herbs for tea 
and specific types of sound or music and activities that you can be doing related to each chakra to stimulate them to have better flow or better movement, uh, to unblock them, to strengthen them, or to help them calm down and become more consistent in flow. Uh, and generally speaking, uh, a lot of the research behind chakras or behind energy systems in the body, whether you're talking about chakras or acupuncture or massage or just pressure points, all of those different types of study of the energy in the body talk about our basic health on so many levels, the, the physical function, the physical illnesses that we experience, uh, the physical pain, but also then the the emotional traumas uh, that might weaken us in a specific energy point. For example, root chakra has a lot to do with being, having a, a strong foundation and a basic sense of security, how safe we feel in the world or secure in, in having our basic needs met or being able to meet our own basic needs. Uh, if, if that is weak or blocked, then you might be having money troubles, for example, or you might not feel comfortable or safe going by yourself for a walk outside of your home. Uh, so, or you might also have digestive problems or um, constipation issues. So there are a, a lot of parts of the body and of the psychological, the brain, the way our minds work, our emotional bodies, our emotional selves. It, it, these things are not separate. Here I am, all of those things right here in me. And so finding the chakras gave me a little piece that I could manage, that I could take action on it for my own well-being. And that has been very important for me over the past few years to have actions that I could take on my own behalf at home without a whole lot of preparation or uh, doctors or anything like that if they were not available to me. So thank you for following along this far and I look forward to discussing each of the seven primary chakras with you in more detail in the next few weeks. All of this is leading up to uh, the workshop that I will be offering in October. That workshop is the seven years of success, I believe it's called. <laughs> uh, I just updated the name to make more sense for what the workshop offers, so uh, forgive me. But seven years of success, and the workshop discusses using this ancient and well-researched understanding of chakras and energy and patterns of growth and of behavior to chart your own life way patterns and then use that to predict uh, the challenges and the opportunities that might be coming up for you in a specific year so that you can actually be prepared to meet the challenge or to overcome the challenge or to um, really grab that opportunity and run with it. And that to me is success, is, is really feeling prepared and, and having the support and resources that would most benefit you personally as you move forward so that you can move forward and not just repeat the same old tapes and patterns and unhealthy behaviors um, that might have been holding you back in the past. I love talking with you. I look forward to talking with you again soon. Be well. <laughs>